Hey everybody, Vern Keenan from SalesforceDevOps.net here. And today we're going to learn how to use GitHub Actions to do continuous integration in Salesforce. Let's commit. Hey everybody, Vern here in the SalesforceDevOps.net demo studio. And today what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to use SFDX CLI with GitHub Actions. And what we're going to do roughly is create a JWT OAuth authorization flow. We're going to have to create some certificates from that. We're going to go into Salesforce and create a connected app. We're going to test it. Then we're going to add the actions script to our existing repo. And then we're going to activate it with a git push. And then we're going to watch the results here on GitHub. So to get started with that, I'm going to bring up this VS Code session right here. And here I have opened into a repo which has all of the um, package.xml file and all of the code that I want to deploy here. I've got, got a bunch of classes. So I have a large package here that I want to deploy. And I want to do that automatically with just a push. So that's our goal here. So to get started with that, I'm going to launch a terminal. I'm going to clean up my screen here, and I'm going to uh, grow this a little bit. And I'm going to start following that script, which is to start off, I want to go to my home directory. I want to go into my SSH, and then if necessary, I'm going to make a JWT directory, which I already have. And now what I'm going to do is create the self-signed certificates and the keys required to do JWT authentication. So the very first step with that is I'm going to the how-to to that file I showed you, and I'm just going to paste in these four statements. Oops, I don't need those four statements. These four statements. There we go. So that's going to generate a key and it's going to ask me these questions right now about where I'm at. I should put in correct information. So I'm going to put in US for United States, California for my state, Oakland, uh, organization name uh, Keenan Vision, uh, consulting, and a uh, knock to uh, telnexus.com knock at telnexus.com and actually most of this information can be fake it's not checked in any way but I would say put in the correct information so what that has generated now is we have a server.csr and a server.key we need one more file we need the certificate so you got to generate it with this command and now we have three files server.crt, CSR, and key. Now I'm actually going to need this server.crt file later on this workstation so I can upload it to Salesforce. So I'm going to take care of that now. I'm just going to do a file open. And I'm going to go right to there. Burn slash dot ssh dot JWT server dot CRT. Okay, this is the certificate file. I'm just going to save that. Save as. I'm going to click local here so I can get onto my local machine and just dump it in my downloads folder. I'm going to remember to delete that later because it shouldn't be hanging around. Okay, now the next thing is we're going to create a Salesforce connected app. So I'm going to put VS Code away. I'm going to get Edge back up here. I'm going to bring up uh, the Salesforce org in which I want to create it. And I'm already there. Um, I got You get, get there by going to App, App Manager, and then New Connected App. So I get to the same place here. I'm going to call this uh, VS Code Actions one and I'm going to put in the same fake email and go there 
The next thing is to put is to tap this because we're going to do OAuth. The next thing I need to put in is the correct string for the callback URL. And you see it here. Um, copy all this exactly unless you have a conflicting port. We're also going to use digital signatures, and that's where that file I just uploaded is going to come in. So I want to select that server.crt file. There it is. I need three scopes down here in my OAuth authentication. Um, if you don't ha know what the heck I'm talking about, don't worry. That's just part of OAuth. But unfortunately, you need to follow along to each step precisely. So what I'm going to pick here is manage user data by API, user data by web browsers, and refresh request. I'm going to add those to the authorized scope. OK, now I can save. Go up here to save. Can usually ignore that message. So I've entered in all that information correctly. Here you can see it's reflecting some of that uh, uh, certificate information I put in. Now what I need to do is I have to click on edit up here, uh, manage here rather, clicked on manage, and now I'm going to edit the policies. So I have to change this per permitted users to admin approved users. Click OK and click Save down here. OK. Now, on the same screen, I still need to go down here and select either a profile or a permission set for the end user. So I'm probably going to do something that's not the smartest in the world right here, but I'm going to select System Administrator as my profile. So anybody who's going to use this uh, connected app needs to be in the System Administrator group which so happens that the users we're using today are in that group. So here we go. We have, uh, this is all set up, I believe. So now we've saved that. And we're going to go down here now. Oh, one other thing before we leave here is we're going to go back to App Manager. Look at the app we just created, which is this one. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on view. There we go. View. This will show me the consumer key, which is this long string here. So I'm going to copy that because I'm going to need that. Well, I will copy it again in a second. Now I'm going to switch over to VS Code so I have my terminal again. So I'm going to close this file. I'm going to expand my terminal all the way. OK. So now I want to test. And I'm copying from the script I showed you the test string. So let's kind of look at that. Should note that the, the org to which we're connecting, we're putting in the connected app, should be an enterprise org that's a dev hub. Or it could be a developer org that's a dev hub. But it's got to be a dev hub org. OK, so this command here is going to help us test it. So let's go over it here, SFDX force auth JWT grant. So what that means is it's going to grant based on this particular client ID. So I need that 85 character string. I'm going to go over to edge and copy that now. Copy. Back over to VS Code. There we go. I'm going to paste that in. OK. I'm going to change username from the template and the instructions to Vern. And that's where the server dot key, the server key is we just generated. I'm going to change this also to my correct username. There we go. 
set default dev hub username and then I'm going to use an alias, create a new alias for this login called dev JWT. Now we're going to hit enter. Successfully authorized. Yay. Once you get to this point, you've completed the most difficult part. So let's go on to the easy part now. So I'm going to uh, just close this terminal session with control D start up another one and uh, looky I'm back in my home directory of my repo so that's fun I'm going to put this back down here I'm gonna look at our Explorer stuff and now what I want to do is I have to go into uh, the repo that I'm manipulating here and put these secrets in so let's take care of that so here I'm going to go back to GitHub. I'm going to go to the repo that we just created. Oops. Oh. Spring 2020. Okay, here's our repo. And by the way, here's our actions tab, which is empty right now. It's just inviting us to create new actions. So we're looking here at the code again. And what we need to do now, first thing is install the secrets that we just created. So I go to settings, secrets, and you see you have two kinds, actions and dependabot. We're creating repository action secrets, which are available on the free plan. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the first one, which is the Salesforce consumer key right here. And I'm going to get that again right here. So we're going to need that. There we go. We added the secret. We're going to do dev hub username. So that would be a, a parameter we can change. it okay and then we're going to add one more which is the secret key from our uh, from when we originally generated the the key so let's go back here to VS code we're going to go to there we're going to go to uh, cd.sh JWT. And there's our key. I'm just going to copy it right here. And then I'm going to go back over to Edge and paste that puppy right in. Okay. Now this is the most secret part of your secret, so don't put it anywhere else um, and maybe even just delete it right now, recreate it later if you need it. Okay, so we stored our secrets. Now we need to go back to our repo. Okay, start a new terminal session because I'm lazy. Okay, we're almost done. What we need to do now is get our action script into the .github slash workflows directory. And I've got three commands in the uh, script that will do that. So I'm going to copy that and paste them in. Let's take a look. Okay, so that created a .github slash workflows push action deploy file. In here let's take a look at that it's really simple so we have on here the name the action the git action that it will trigger on it runs on Ubuntu so I highly recommend that you stick with Linux for your Salesforce DevOps pipelines uh, command server architecture so that's a mouthful huh but uh, Stick with Linux because then you'll be able to, to consistently use what really is the most popular DevOps command server platform.
So let's stick with Linux. So here I just have a few echo statements to say hello. This will actually check out the file from uh, GitHub and put it active into the local directory. This command will install sfdxcli, so it's required. Um, also here we have, I'm setting up the secret. I'm copying the secret from the secret file to a temporary ephemeral file. Here then I'm running that uh, authorization command. There we go. Um, and you can see that that's a copy of the test command we ran locally. And then here we have the deploy command, which will actually deploy the source using package.xml. So that's it. That's all there is in our action. So it's ready. So now what we're going to do is just push it. I'm just going to use um, VS Code here to do the push. And now I'm going to say test pipeline. That's the name of our commit message. So I'm going to uh, do a commit. And now this sync button here is actually pushing it. So now let us go over, back over here to Edge on our repo. And we can look here in the actions. And now, as you can see, it's changed to a list of our jobs. I can click on the action here, and we can see that it's running. So here we have it running, and we can actually watch the steps. It's a little slow today. It's just checking it out, and then it's going to install. So I tell you what, we're going to pause right now while this runs and come back and look at the results. Okay, we're back, and let's take a look at how we're running here. So we did the checkout, which is to bring the repo into the local directory. We installed uh, sfdxcli. Make this a little bigger. There we go. And then this is how we actually, this is taking the key and putting it in the server key so we can see the results there. We can look at the results of this activity, which is to run it. And you can see how the secrets are being handled during this authentication step. Now it's actually still running. And uh, let's go back over to here and look at our environment in Salesforce. So I'm going to go here to the deploy and deployment status. And we can see that we have an actual active deploy now. It's in the Apex testing phase. So I was able to successfully install 361 metadata elements, and now it's going through 87 unit tests. And we can go back over to here, and we can see that reflected in this output here as well. This should look familiar to many. And it's going through its process. It's almost done. And it will be done. It's going to work in a little bit. So that's it. Okay, everybody. Wow, that worked. So now hopefully you've uh, gotten a taste of the good life here with continuous integration using GitHub Actions. Uh, the script should work fine, and you can start adding to it now. You can put in integrations with Slack. You can put in integrations with other packages. You can add more Salesforce DevOps functions, such as continuous testing or cybersecurity functions and developer cybersecurity. So this is the, the way to saving yourself from the drudgery of chain sets and watching your terminal turn over while it does a submit. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to like and subscribe and let me know what you think. So thanks for watching and talk to you next time.